we know from 75 years of history. And, um, you know, Charlie, I think, uh, touched on the issue, but didn't get it quite right. Um, I mean, he's a, he's a master scholar, but I don't think that's the way the U.S. government has seen it or behaved. I mean, look, for 75 years, we've extended nuclear deterrence over uh, 30 plus allies in Europe and Asia. And in, in all those cases, I mean, Lyle put a lot on the distance point, but you know what? South Korea is much closer, is about 200 miles from China and about 5,000 miles probably from Hawaii. Japan's not that much farther away from China. It's equidistant. Philippines, same deal. These are all re relevant. And so uh, the, the point here, though, is that a fight over Taiwan would not be about Taiwan itself. And Lyle touched on it. He said they would attack American bases. They'd undoubtedly attack Japan. It would become about something much larger. And in fact, it would be about something much larger because China would be forcibly subordinating, let's be frank, a country that does not want to be under its boot, right? And that is standing up and that would be a signal example for every other country in the region that is looking to the United States. And so the ultimate point is, if it escalated to that point, it wouldn't just be about Taiwan. And let's unpack what it means when China would go to the mat. Its invasion has failed. What's it going to do? Launch a nuclear weapon at Los Angeles? Well, then it will definitely be something much more about Taiwan. In fact, the Chinese have tried this against us in the 90s, and it didn't work. So in fact, history shows that we're able to deal with this problem. It's very hard, but we know how to deal with it. Yeah, like I said, I, you know, I'm watching Chinese military TV every night. I'm watching all their tests. I'm, I'm fully aware of their capabilities. And, you know, I'm, I'm shocked to say, I'm shocked to hear that from uh, Bridge that, that um, the invasion is unlikely to succeed. That's, that's far from the truth. I mean, the the truth is, if you look at each component of China's armed forces, that is, the Navy probably on its own could win this fight. The Army on its own without any support, that is, the ground forces could pro ha probably has sufficient firepower and the means to win the fight. Even the Air Force, uh, the strategic rocket forces on their own could probably win. Even the People's Armed Police, I dare say, that is the half a million strong police force now being fully equipped with mobile regiments and all the requisite helicopters and lift. So, so every one of those five components could probably win. And Mr. Colby is very wrong. This isn't about heavy lift. You know, a lot of people make say, well, you know, there's only 10 heavy lift ships and some row rows. And if we sank those, that it would all be over. No, 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 that's absolutely wrong. Uh, the what will hit Taiwan first are not only all the rockets, which will, you know, frankly, level the place to rubble, uh, sadly, but is is the special forces, the Helleborn forces, that is a, probably a thousand helicopters ferrying troops to Taiwan, going to places that, you know, aren't expected, uh, and then a massive uh, parachute drop. And by the way, yes, they've studied Normandy thoroughly. I've been through all their documents on that. And uh, they fully realized that, you know, the best thing about Normandy was that it we mostly, besides Omaha Beach, mostly just strolled up the beach. Why? Because we our airborne forces had dropped in behind. The Chinese understand that. They've got all that ready and, and they will be going in. <laughs>